This video outlines the strategies developed by Team Robot Eaters for participation in the 2013 RoboCup. We will be participating in the red and yellow zones for the competition. The video will consist of three parts. First, we will detail the components used in our strategies. Next, we will show our current progress in terms of robots and materials used for testing. Finally, we will detail the various strategies used in finding and detecting victims. The phone we will be using is an Android Galaxy S3 by Samsung with a 1.4 GHz quad-core CPU. It has a built-in 8.0 megapixel camera, built-in Bluetooth and Wi-Fi used for communicating with the Yo-Yo and other robots. It also has various accelerometers used for orientation. The phone will be the main point of calculation for algorithms performed by the robot. The Yo-Yo is the main communicator between the robot and the phone. It controls the various servers and sensors and reads input from them to report back to the phone. It is powered by the car's battery. The IR sensors are used to detect the environment around the robot. There are one on each side, two diagonals, one in the front, and one in the back. The servos allow the mounted camera to move 180 degrees in both the vertical and horizontal axes. This allows the camera to locate victims after initial detection has been made. The Hall effect sensors, which are not shown, are attached to the gears and allow the robot to accurately detect how far it has moved with each rotation of the wheels. This will be used in the RatSlam algorithm for odometry. The infrared sensor, also not shown, is used for heat detection. This will be mounted on the front of the robot below the main servos. The infrared sensor will be used for initial victim detection. Next, we will show the various components of our testing apparatuses, which we will use to test our robots. We have built a small section of the competition maze, which represents the yellow zone with its various ramps, to test our robot in. The spacing of the walls is approximately 1.5 meters apart, and the ramps are inclined at 45 degrees. We also have a baby doll with realistic face and body proportions for detection using our body detection algorithm, along with a heat blanket that will simulate the victim's body heat and will be used for detection by our infrared camera. Here we have robots of various stages of completion. These are the vehicles which will detect the victims. They are based off of hobbyist remote control cars modified with a grate with various sensors on top. Each will be used as part of our swarm algorithm, which will be discussed. Now we will talk about the four main parts of our strategy. They are detection algorithms, rat slam, which is used for mapping, situational awareness, and swarm mentality. First we will go over our body detection algorithm. Here's a picture of a baby space that was recognized through our software that is currently in Android with an OpenCV backend. We're processing in an image feed and swapping in data sets so we can recognize different parts of a body and even a face. Here's a face of a baby that is currently recognized. Here is a picture where the baby's body is recognized, not the face. So if we don't have a clear view of the face, hopefully we'll still be able to recognize the baby. Here's another picture where it was recognized and there's one where it was not. So the software will be used in conjunction to other utilities such as a heat sensor. So we're not relying solely on this, but this will be used for verifying victims. Next, we will talk about our simulation software, which we use for testing and enhancing the swarm mentality. This is a simulation for a robot swarm moving through a maze of unknown territory. As you can see, each robot is denoted by an ID number and their current state is represented by their color. Each robot makes their own map of the maze and shares key information with the other robots to try to keep their proximity and optimize their movement in the maze. With this, we hope to find new unexplored areas and identify victims faster. Now we will show a demo of two of the robots acting in a swarm while mapping out the environment. The first robot in this video is the lead robot and maintains a certain distance from the wall while simultaneously mapping the environment. The second robot trails closely behind the first, ready to switch roles with the first robot in the event that a victim is detected. To detect obstacles, the robots use the IR sensors to perform a simple wall following. The Hall effect sensor tracks the distance, while the accelerometer in the phone tracks direction, and the phone's camera captures video. This is then fed into the mapping algorithm to detect the robot's current position. Next, we will show a walkthrough of what happens when our robots detect a victim. First. Both robots are moving forward and mapping, attempting to find a victim. Next, one of the robots detects a victim on its infrared camera and switches to victim detection mode. The second robot then becomes the leader and continues mapping and searching for more victims 
while the first robot attempts to positively identify the found victim. Once it is finished, it continues mapping where the lead robot left off. In this video, we showed you the various tools, components, and strategies that we will use in our participation of the 2013 RoboCup. We hope that you enjoyed this video.